Welcome to Life of Being Well. Today's guest is Fernando. Fernando started Wellness Room Miami after 30 years as part of Corporate World. Fernando's passion for the holistic healing arts, business acumen, and realization that there was a need for a space where people and practitioners could access different holistic modalities and build community under one roof in a comfortable, professional, and relaxing environment. Those were the foundations for Wellness Room Miami to be open. Fernando completed his training with Dr. Brian Weiss in past life regression and is a certified hypnotherapist. He's an active member of IMDHA, a certified Reiki master and teacher, teaches meditation, conducts corporate wellness events, and is president of Holistic Chamber of Commerce, Miami chapter. Wow. And when <laughs> Fernando is not working, he is enjoying family time with his two chihuahuas. <laughs> Fernando. <laughs> Thank you, Rada. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice, nice to see you. Yep. Nice to see you too. And I would love to start our session with knowing what motivates Fernando. What motivates Fernando? I mean, it's a great question. Uh, I mean, motivates me to be here because I'm doing what I love. That's exactly what motivates me. I mean, being able to come here every day doesn't feel like work. And I know it sounds a little cliche. I mean, but they say, I mean, that if you find what you love, you don't feel like you were working. And that's exactly the feeling. I mean, every time that I come across the doors here, uh, knowing, I mean, they're going to see the clients and that they are going to be getting what they need. I mean, and, and uh, that's basically what motivates me to be here. So finally, after 30 years of corporate career, <laughs> you found love of your life. Yes, I think that love was there, but I was not paying attention I mean, to it. Oh, so that okay. little love affair, I mean, on the side, I mean, from my corporate career, I mean, <laughs> that I'm keeping hidden from a lot of people because clearly corporate world, I mean, and holistic practices, uh, especially that long ago, didn't get along that well. Yes. It was uh, something that um, that they were, um, well, I mean, it was not, I mean, the moment, I mean, for these practices, I mean, to be out there in the open, so as, as they're readily today. Yes. So uh, I did, I mean, start practicing uh, Reiki 25 years ago. So clearly it has been a while, but um, I didn't uh, openly tell anybody, I mean, that I was doing this because uh, it was a little weird. So. Yes. Yeah, no, even to, even now, yeah. Um, there is this woo-woo kind of connotation Correct. to anything spiritual or Correct. anything um, when it comes to um, supernatural ways of healing, I call them. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, so tell definitely. us, what does well-being mean to you? Well, well-being for me uh, comprises that we look at the individual from many different angles. And that's exactly, I mean, where I talk to people. I mean, and when I explain to people what it is, that's exactly the meaning of holistic. Many people uh, are not familiar with the word holistic. And actually, they, once they hear the word holistic, they start thinking, I mean, about, oh, strange things, I mean, and uh, uh, all these uh, other things. But holistic, the meaning of holistic is looking at something from many different angles, from all its angles. And we as individuals, I mean, have a physical part clearly, I mean, which is very, very important, I mean, that we take good care of, but there's also other things to it, I mean, to us as individuals, I mean, and there's an emotional part mm -hmm. that although it's, uh, it's, it's cared after, I mean, there's a still a lot of stigma when somebody says, I mean, that they're going, I mean, to a psychiatrist or a psychologist, I mean, there's still quite a bit of stigma about that, so clearly it's not as open and as uh, physical conventional medicine, mm -hmm. holopathic medicine, and let alone, I mean, the fact, I mean, of the spiritual side of the human being that is so important, I mean, and that we overlook, I mean, and either you have a religion that you follow, but it's something that is very personal. And for me, well-being is looking at the, at, the, at the individual as such, I mean, as all these emotions can actually um, turn out into being diseases. I mean, definitely, I mean, they can turn into disease. And uh, somebody, I mean, who is in a constant state of anger or, or pressure, I mean, from of course, will clearly, I mean, um, or it's a very good candidate, I mean, to have some sort of health issues. Mm -hmm. So for me, well-being is looking at the individual as a whole, looking at the spiritual, the emotional, and the physical part, all together, not independently. 
Great. No, that, that is very true. And actually, that brings me to the very next question, which is how did your background shape the way you perceive or pursue well-being? Because corporate career, 25 years of Reiki, and now you're a wellness entrepreneur. So tell us, how, how does all of that work? Well, yeah, that's exactly the point. I mean, uh, I mean, I was part of corporate. I mean, I was very driven. I mean, I was a C-level executive, I mean, for many years. Uh, the stress that came with it, I mean, was inherent, I mean, to the positions. I mean, there was nothing, I mean, that, uh, that uh, it, it comes with the territory, like they say. And, uh, but at the, at the site, like I said, I mean, I had this other practice, I mean, Reiki and then meditation, I mean, that I've been practicing for many years. And that sort of kept me, uh, kept me grounded. Still, I mean, uh, my focus, I mean, back then was, I mean, being part of corporate, I mean, and doing my job, I mean, as best as I possibly could. And clearly that balance was not easy. Uh, stress definitely, I mean, was, was a constant uh, issue in my life. And that was one of the triggers, I mean, that uh, when it reached a peak, um, I needed to do something. I mean, and that's when I decided to make the change. So clearly, I mean, that has uh, been, so as, as, I mean, I'm not going to use this word rough, I mean, but it was, it was, I mean, my comfort zone, I mean, for 30 years, I mean, being in corporate, that's what I knew what to do. But that was also the trigger for finding my true passion, which is, I mean, doing this. I mean, and like you said, being a wellness entrepreneur and being able to help others. I mean, that really has become my, my, my motto. I mean, and uh, my way of life. Definitely. Like you are in a much happier place by finding <laughs> your vocation um, that really meets your inner needs um, in Correct. Terms, as far as um, being a wholesome human being. But tell us more about, um, the place where you were born and brought up, because I know um, you come mm -hmm. from South America. And Correct. What, what is the perception there? Like, I'm just curious. Well, there's many different perceptions. I mean, like in every place, I mean, but uh, talking about my experience and my personal experience, I come from a traditional family in, in, in Latin America. I was uh, born and raised in Colombia, uh, Catholic uh, background. So clearly, uh, um, anything that falls out of the Catholic practice, and especially, I mean, back then, was not so easily acceptable or open. So I keep telling people when, when, when I talk to them about this, I had a lot of different experiences as a child and actually were gone into this direction. But I was very kindly and lovingly taught to forget. Because <laughs> they were not in line. I mean, it was, I mean, uh, the normal customs, I mean, of... Uh, of being, I mean, a, a, a good Catholic, I mean, and, and, and in, that, in, in that place. So you, I mean, follow suit, I mean, and uh, you put all these wonderful and beautiful practices and experiences in the back of your mind. And that's where they reside, I mean, for a long time until something comes up and wakes them up. Mm, wow. Yep. Great. <laughs> so the wellness entrepreneur. So your job is revolving around other people's well-being role do you play even at home in terms of your uh, your and others well-being i like to see myself as a facilitator i like to see myself i mean as somebody i mean that you can use as a sparring partner i mm -hmm. mean and somebody i mean that you can come with i mean if you have an issue i'm here to remind you exactly i mean of all the inner and things i mean that you have inside of you because the answers are within we have the answers nobody knows better than ourselves, exactly what we need to do in order to heal. You can go anywhere that you want, but the answers are inside. So I see myself as a helper. I mean, basically in that aspect, I mean, it's a guide, not even a helper. I mean, it's just a guide, uh, a facilitator to help you find, I mean, what is it that you need in order to heal. So that's, that's how I see my role. That's, mm. uh, I don't see myself as a healer ever i mean and i don't expect i mean to see myself as a healer i think i mean the moment i mean that we go there i mean we're losing a little bit of the perspective i mean of my this is my perception i mean of what we're doing we're here just i mean to open the door for people to find what is it exactly that they need to do uh, which is inside them to heal and what about home you know i know you have a wonderful daughter that you refer to several times Correct. so I, um, yeah. how does your well-being affect her well-being well, I have my daughter and my son, both of uh -huh. them. I mean, they're, they're 22 and 18. I mean, so they're no kids anymore. I mean, but uh, since they're little, I mean, they've been uh, benefiting from receiving Reiki. 
they're both Reiki certified. I mean, so wow. they're very much, I mean, uh, into, into the process. I mean, they have their own lives. I mean, one is already out of college. The other one is at college. And uh, they're very open to it. I mean, so it's absolutely beautiful because uh, they are, I mean, growing up in an environment, I mean, where um, if they want to pursue, I mean, religion, I mean, religion is absolutely fine. But these holistic practices as complement to conventional medicine is the way, I mean, that they've been uh, raised and uh, is exactly the way uh, that, they, that, they, that, they, that they heal. Um, mm. If any one of them, I mean, has a sore throat or they have the flu, uh, they'll go to the doctor, I mean, to make sure, I mean, that it's nothing, I mean, that is too complicated. But you will find me giving them Reiki, I mean, <laughs> and, and they asking me to give them Reiki, which is absolutely fantastic. So it's, it's beautiful. It's really nice. Tell us more about your 30 years of corporate career. Yep. And tell us how it helped you or pulled you back from your wellness pursuits. Okay. So being part of corporate, I mean, was an asset, definitely. I mean, it was, I mean, an absolutely fantastic uh, part of my life. It taught me a lot. And actually, I mean, much of what I learned, I mean, during my, my corporate years, I mean, I'm running companies uh, in different places is exactly what allowed me to open this space that I'm running today with a lot more ease than, a, than probably other people who doesn't have that business acumen. So uh, that has been an absolute blessing, not only that, but being in corporate, I mean, gave me uh, a structure. I mean, that not a lot of, you know, practitioners, uh, I mean, have had the exposure, I mean, or have had the opportunity to be exposed to. Uh, we work from the heart, I mean, in these, in these practices, I mean, as you well know, and sometimes, I mean, once you start, I mean, working with other people, you need to start looking, I mean, at what you're doing, I mean, also as a business. I mean, because mm-hmm. if it's, that's going to be your, your, your main source of income and that's going to be your life, well, you need to look at it that way. So it was a blessing, I mean, definitely, I mean, to, to have had, I mean, the opportunity to learn everything that I needed to learn. And to, so to be able to, to get this off the ground, I mean, in, a, in record speed, We've been open for two years, I mean, here at Wellness Room, I mean, but uh, from uh, signing the lease, I mean, to opening up, I mean, it was uh, less than a month. <laughs> mm, wow. So what exactly do, does your Wellness Room offer? At Wellness Room, we offer different holistic practices. I mean, and uh, our mission is very simple. Our mission is very short. It's just spreading love and healing. That's mm. the mission of Wellness Room. And so here you can find um, hypnotherapy. Uh, we can, and you can find, I mean, past life regressions. You find uh, Reiki, I mean, both, I mean, private sessions, and you find also uh, classes and Reiki circles. We have uh, holistic coaching, which is another portion of what I do. I mean, uh, and working with people in a holistic approach to wellness. We have also uh, sound healing. I don't do the sound healing. I mean, there's an expert here I mean, who comes I mean, and does this beautiful practice. We also offer breath work. And um, so we have a multitude of different practices so that people can find, I mean, according to our business plan, I mean, and what we offer, I mean, is, is that people can find here on the one roof different holistic practices instead of having to drive through uh, Miami and go to five or six different places. I mean, to find one practice at each place. So that's what we're offering. Great. That sounds like a big, uh, big offering in terms of like healing modalities. But tell yep. us, have you ever faced any challenges with um, perhaps introducing a modality or perhaps um, people receiving modalities? Yes, absolutely. I mean, there is a still, I mean, a little bit of a, uh, Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is, I mean, actually recently, not too long ago, I'm not going to disclose, I mean, where, but uh, somebody referred me to an institution, which is a pretty well-known institution here to offer uh, meditation. I mean, as a practice, it's a corporate environment. And I think, I mean, that if there's one space, I mean, where meditation or relaxation practices, I mean, have a space, it's precisely in the corporate world. So somebody referred me to this space, and uh, when I spoke to the person that, uh, that I had been connected with, uh, she was like, meditation? I cannot present that to the board. That's too weird. And I was like, okay, I mean, that's fine. I mean, that's, that's your perspective on meditation, I, and I can clearly understand, I mean, that you're not ready to present to this to the board, but maybe some of them are open, and you don't know. So, yes, I mean, uh, it's still, I mean, there's a... a 
I've had people who would come here to practices. I mean, and a family member will decide to stay outside because they don't want to be exposed. <laughs> Whatever it is. Wow, is, is, this is contagious. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fascinating. I mean, and I'm like, okay, fine. I mean, that's absolutely beautiful and it's fair. Yeah, that's, okay. that's okay with me. So we keep it very secular. I mean, and we work very much in line with, as a, like I said, I mean, for me, these are complementary practices. I work alongside, I mean, uh, and I work with a lot of clients, I mean, that are undergoing chemo or that mm -hmm. are preparing for surgeries. I mean, or that are, uh, this is, this is the niche, I mean, of the, of the, of the business, I mean, that we do here, I mean, and the clients that we see, I mean, is in order to help people, I mean, who's really undergoing different, uh, health issues. And they're, they're looking at complementary practices as complementary practices. I don't even wear the word, the, I don't like to use the word alternative because yes. that already has a connotation of yes. one or the other. Here we are, I mean, trying to assist, I mean, the spiritual and the emotional part of the individual, while the experts, uh, the doctors, we don't pretend, I mean, to heal anything, I mean, that we're, I mean, that we can because mm -hmm. that's not our role. So, it's, that's why, I mean, I find it important, I mean, that uh, that, that distinction is made, that this, is, for me, is not alternative, but it's complementary, and that we can work alongside with doctors, mental health counselors, psychiatrists, and any professionals from the healing arts as a complement and an, in an adjunct form with them. That is a perfect, perfect segue to my next question, which is, people come from different walks of life. And they are definitely seeking some sort of relief in terms of it could be spiritual, emotional, even ph Correct. physical pain. Do you see this rising in our society as an epidemic or a pandemic kind of thing where we're increasingly going to seek or resort to these kind of um, healing arts? I like that word so much better. Mm -hmm. um, kind of techniques or a ways of being and living? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think, I mean, people is, is, is um, getting over a little bit. I mean, from the hundreds and hundreds of years, I mean, where the emphasis has been on the physical and where people, I mean, would be looking, I mean, for wellness, I mean, or perceiving, I mean, uh, uh, better self, I mean, or wellness yeah. from a perspective of going somewhere, I mean, and, and being diagnosed, first of all, because then you become the diagnosed. And then right after the diagnose, I mean, here are these uh, magnificent uh, chemical products, I mean, that you have to ingest, I mean, to make yourself better. But I think people, I mean, is willing to try other things. I mean, I really see people, I mean, opening up. And again, I'm not, I mean, in any way, shape or form saying, I mean, that medicine and drugs when necessary are necessary. But I am also, I mean, adamant, I mean, and this is the conversation that I have with a lot of people, that I have personally seen, and not only myself, I mean, but some of the doctors, I mean, that I have worked with, that somebody undergoing chemo, chemo is a necessary procedure, I mean, to treat cancer. I mean, it is. But if you complement it with a practice like Reiki, the significant reduction on side effects, which is one of the biggest yes. complaints, I mean, from people, I mean, undergoing chemo, in terms, I mean, of well-being, of being able to maintain their energy, of maintaining their appetite, um, I mean, in the neuropathies, I mean, that it can produce have been really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And it's not only, I mean, clients that I have seen, I mean, but there's uh, multiple medical studies, I mean, done at Harvard, I mean, I mean very uh, reputable institutions where we can see how these complementary practice actually do have a very important role in the well-being of the person. So that's the beauty of it. Can help heal at a much deeper level sometimes Correct. than we even realize it. Correct. We, Correct. we might go for one thing and we end up getting healed in five different ways, which Correct. perhaps we're not prescribed. <laughs> Correct. Like, like I like to say, I mean, we don't offer miracles, but we see one or another. <laughs> <laughs> we see a few I happening. like that word, miracle, better. <laughs> so based on your experiences and working with different modalities, what are some practical tips or advice that you can share with our corporate audience, especially people who are most of the days stuck behind a desk and yeah. working like long hours. So they would really benefit from it. One probably of the, of the, of the um, biggest recommendations that I can make and that I believe in a constant state of stress 
for most people live in a constant state of stress and it's so 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 harmful for your health i mean and the effects i mean that it can have i mean are just absolutely crazy so take a look do something find a practice i mean that might help you i mean to reduce stress and um it's so important i mean and it's not only the physical part of the stress again it's not only because people think i mean that they de-stress by going on the weekend and riding a bike i mean for 60 miles uh which actually i mean at the end of the day is exerting i mean their samples only to the limit because they don't have time to do it over the week but anyway so find a practice that you can do and one of the ones that i can recommend is just learning to breathe mm. we don't know how to breathe <laughs> and it's so simple so i mean it's a beautiful practice i mean that is very it's personal it's portable you can take it anywhere and you have no need of any other tools i mean that just i mean your intention and finding two minutes i mean out of the time in order to go and work with them so for that that's one thing i mean that i would uh, mm -hmm. that i would recommend uh keeping your emotional and spiritual um wellness in a level of importance as your physical also i mean that's also i mean one of the recommendations that i do tell i mean people that come here that's another thing that i that i think is very important so that you can have an overall well-being and don't be um afraid i mean to ask i mean and to try something new I also tell people, I mean, as long as you are not ingesting products, I mean, that might be harmful for you. And these practices are very safe, are very secure. And it's something that clearly is not going to have side effects. So mm -hmm. if you're open to it, give it a try. I mean, and you'll see the difference. Great. That is definitely something that everyone listening to this could at least give it a try. Um, and yeah. you only learn from your experience. That, that's Correct. that's how I, I believe um, I grew up in India, but never got exposed to any of this until I needed it. So yeah. I guess every, everything has its time and place. But um, I do also want you to share a little bit about your wellness uh, room and tell, tell us, like, are these kind of places very much like needed in every city, every town, just so that people have that option? to complement their ongoing treatments, stress, you call it whatever you want. Yeah. In my perspective, yes. I mean, there is a need. I mean, like I said, I mean, because if we continue only looking at the physical portion of our well-being, uh, we're just looking at a, at a portion of it. Yeah. So definitely, I mean, having a spaces, I mean, that are safe, I mean, that are professional, where people can actually go and experience these practices is something, I mean, that I very much vouch for. Definitely. And anyone looking to get killed in Miami, please seek out his uh, wellness room. And if you have any questions for me or Fernando, please leave them in the comment section below or email them at info at radhakalaria.com. If you like this message, please like, share, subscribe, or follow. Until next time, have a fantastic day. Thank you, Radha.